Breathing is underrated. Take yourself back to the last time you devalued when somebody asked you to take a deep breath. In fact, why don't you start breathing deeply right now? I'm going to be doing it with you. When I was preparing this presentation, I was actually planning on writing about the benefits of breathing on memory function. And as I was going through the process of that, I realized that if I only talked about breathing for memory function, I would hugely be underrating breathing. I have three questions for you. Have you ever felt defeated by stress? Have you ever felt as though you hmm, crave for more clarity? Have you ever wished you knew the secret remedy to get an additional millisecond just to think? How much deeper would you breathe right now if I told you you are always one deep breath away from connecting to that solution? Breathe deeper right now. <laughs> Good. <laughs> In traditional yoga, there's this idea that if you control your breathing, you control your mind. I'm going to update that. I'm going to say that if you control your breathing, you have much more of a conscious decision of how, what hormones begin to flow through your body. So as far as I'm concerned today, by controlling your breathing, you have an option of controlling how you feel. Is that worth taking a deep breath for? I'm a forest yoga teacher. Forest yoga was developed by Anna Forrest, an innovative approach to a traditional practice. And she came up, she came up with a very innovative way of breathing. And I'd like to do that with you. I hope you guys can do this with me. The breathing technique goes in two parts. The first part is called Ujjaya breath. Ujjaya breath means victorious breath. And I love breathing in this way because it makes me feel really steady and keeps me really calm. I'm actually doing it right now. <laughs> the first part, the first stage of this breathing, it requires a whispering sound in the back of the throat. Just watch and listen first. Do that with me. Okay, and usually it's the case, we, we have a room of very quiet breathers. So this is what I would like you to do. I would like you to whisper, Ted, like this. Ted. Do that. Do that a little louder. Great. <laughs> now keep that flowing feeling through the back of the throat as we continue breathing. The second part of this breathing technique, you inhale through open lips, exhale through sealed lips, looks and sounds like this. Do that with me. Great. The final stage, you inhale and exhale with sealed lips. It looks and sounds like this. Do that. Keep that whispering sound moving through the back of, the back of your throat. The second stage of this breathing technique is called expanding the rib cage. Do this with me. Place your hands on the sides of your ribs. Exhale everything out. Take a huge inhale and feel for using your breath to press your hands out. Exhale, relax your rib cage. Do that one more time with me. Take a huge inhale and wash your breath in the direction of your hands. Keep breathing like that throughout the rest of the presentation. And what I'm very excited to share with you will be much easier to retain. I've been working with drug and alcohol rehabs and mental health organizations for the last 12 years. Often is the case when I'm teaching this breathing technique, a lot, of our clients group, a lot of our client groups 
begin to feel slightly lightheaded. This could be because they're not used to breathing so deeply. Hence, they're not used to having as much oxygen flow up to the brain. Some of you guys have already stopped breathing. Good. Where did I get to with that? Oh, that's right. Okay. And for the rest of the population, and that's me included, the intensity junkies, the intensity junkies, by breathing in this deep way, we often start to feel really relaxed and maybe even sleepy. This is because the deep breathing is beginning to regulate your nervous system, which I'll talk about in a moment. In order to get the vitality that we all deserve out of each and every single deep breath, you need to have active feet. Put your feet on the floor. That was a lot of feet. <laughs> spread the balls of the feet, then spread the toes, even if it's in your shoes. Keep your feet active and your breath super strong throughout the rest of what I'm about to share with you. <laughs> that was some foot. <laughs> a moment ago, you remember that I said, in traditional yoga, if you control your breathing, you control your mind. Now I'm going to remember when I said that if you control your breathing, then you start to control your hormones. The endocrine system, one of its functions is to secrete hormones throughout various sites of the body. These hormones govern how we feel. And the hormones that get secreted depend on what's going on within our internal and external world. It's important to note that right now we live in an age where we are obsessed with changing how we feel. We invest a lot of time and money on cigarettes, coffee, alcohol, drugs, shopping, sex, food, gambling, in whatever destructive way we can come up with, just to change how we feel. How much deeper would you breathe if I told you right now that you're always one deep breath away of deciding how you're going to feel? Take a deep breath right now. Let's talk about stress for a moment. The autonomic nervous system, the system that responds to a stressful situation. Within it are two branches. One is called the sympathetic nervous system, your fight or flight. The other is the parasympathetic nervous system, your rest and digest state. Your body receives information through the external world through your senses. The information from your senses then goes up to the memory banks of your brain. And then an alarm sirens off from the base of the brain, called the amygdala. The amygdala is located in the limbic brain, the oldest part of the brain. Now, when this alarm system sirens off, what happens is the body is being told to get into fight or flight. One of the first things that happens when your body goes into that state is that you get completely pumped up with adrenaline. And you need that adrenaline in order to either fight or, or run away. It's interesting to note that what adrenaline actually, one of the things that it does is that it inflames your adipose tissue, your fatty tissue. Now, around about the 20-minute mark, adrenaline slowly begins to leave. But its sister stress hormone, cortisol, stays. And where does it stay? In this fatty tissue. So if you have ever experienced the need to understand how to get over bloating, you need to start breathing deeply right now. Wow. <laughs> I heard so many inhales. That was so cool. <laughs> it's also interesting to note that our ancestors would have used this amygdala when they were under threat. Personally, I can't imagine that they were under that much threat on a regular basis. I don't know about you, but my amygdala sirens off several times a day when I get a text message when I get a social media update, when I get an email that annoys me. We are overusing this stress response. So what can we do to limit the amount of stress hormones that continue to pump around in our body? Here's another forest yoga technique I'd like to share with you. Place your hands on an area of the body where you experience pain or discomfort. Do that right now. Or Place your hands on an area of the body that is least loved. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> you guys are laughing because I don't love you? Okay. Exhale everything out. Take a huge inhale into your area. 
Exhale very slowly. Take a huge inhale and luxuriate in how long and deep your breath gets as you wash it into your area. Exhale, get very excited about the possibility of changing your relationship to this area. Keep breathing into your area as I finish the rest of this presentation. And by the end of it, you may feel completely different. I've been working at Newcastle University as part of a research project. In a few weeks' time, we're going to be putting the candidates that have been doing this particular breathing technique daily for eight weeks through an MRI machine. And we're going to work out, well, we're going to see whether or not the amygdala has changed shape or size. Stay tuned for the results of that. Alongside that, I've been working with the University of Cape Town, Laurie Roche, who happens to be one of the world-leading experts in the autonomic nervous system and heart rate variability. Heart rate variability, okay, this is a good one, is a great marker for autonomic nervous system balance. It is a great indicator to let us know that the parasympathetic nervous system, your rest and digest state, is stimulating the heart. Having high heart rate variability means you are more likely to be in your rest and digest state. You are more likely to have less stress, more clarity, and know the solution to have an additional millisecond just to think. Is that worth taking a deep breath for? He's been acting as, a, as an advisor to this group here who are Northumbria University's complexity and enterprise research team. And I've been working with these guys as the breathing specialist. What these individuals have found is that by using heart rate variability, we are able to manage blood pressure, diabetes, anxiety, and behavioral issues. Is that worth taking a deep breath for? Kush Koya, he's just completed his PhD in leadership and heart rate variability. What his findings have come up with, and this is definitely worth breathing in, is that good quality leaders have high heart rate variability. Furthermore, the people who follow them also naturally have high heart rate variability. Let me remind you what that means. Good quality leaders who breathe deeply have high heart rate variability, live and work from a place of rest and digest. They naturally, in a compelling way, bring the people who follow them to also breathe deeply have high heart rate variability, and live and work from a place of rest and digest. Good quality leaders exercise emotional control. They resist knee-jerk reactions. We are all leaders. Leaders within our own organizations. Leaders in our projects or our jobs, no matter how great or small. Leaders within our own homes, our family, our social groups. If all it takes is to breathe deeply, so that we encourage those individuals in, excuse me, so that we can encourage those individuals who we work with, care for and love, to live and work from a place of rest and digest, to have less stress, more clarity and know how to respond with an additional millisecond deck just to think. Is that not worth breathing very deeply for? So I ask you, never underestimate when someone asks you to take a deep breath. Because you are always one deep breath away from changing the way that you feel within yourself and the way that you choose to respond to the rest of the world. Thank you very much.